On one hand, we have the exuberance and excitement of pursuing biotech research. On the other hand, there is reality. Now, if you know only the exuberance and the excitement part of it and don't know the reality part of it, if you don't know the realistic things about the biotech careers, then it will be a huge disappointment for you when you get into the industry. So today in this video, I'm going to give you more or less around seven to 10 pointers, which will give you or guide you towards the untold truth about the biotech career in India as well as globally. Okay, so I have a better understanding of uh, India, but of course I'm exposed to the global market. So I'll be trying to balance both sides, but yes, this particular video is going to be an eye opener for anyone who thinks that biotech is all about excitement and research, but there is a realism part of it, realistic part of it, which also you should be aware of. Now, first things first, as a biotechie myself, this particular subject or this particular field is a religion to me. And saying anything negative about the religion or I mean, uh, for the sector, it's not that I should not do it. Rather, I would say that if I'm trying to cross the road and I'm lo not looking both sides of the road, then it is wrong, correct? So I must tell you the realistic part so that you can make a decision whether you want to go forward into the biotech sector or not. Now, there can be some pointers which is common for any sector, okay? So basically, even if I'm saying that it is in biotech sector, you go to any sector, okay, majority of the things will always be there. One of them is bureaucracy. So the first point for today is bureaucracy. And this, I, am, I have faced it myself whenever I'm talking to bigger companies, okay? So bigger companies has top management, middle management, and then the workers. And this constant tussle in between the top, middle, and workers leads to bureaucracy or red tapism, as, we, as I say. For example, we say, see this in the government also, right? In, across the globe. So this bureaucracy will be there in almost every big biotech pharma company. And in fact, any company, you will see this kind of bureaucracy. You have to be smart enough to survive this bureaucracy in politics. And if you don't, then it is going to be a big dampener to your spirits. So as a fresher or as an experienced candidate, as you're getting started with your career or you're doing it already, you have to know when to speak what so that it doesn't displease the middle management or the top management. That's something you have to keep in mind. I'm not talking about bootlicking. I'm talking about being mindful of what you talk. Okay. Now, second point is high burnout. Now, if you are somebody who is a peaceful guy, who is, who is not, who is just used to regular life, nine to five, probably biotech is not for you. And I will be very frank. Experiments run till midnight. Processes, bioprocesses run 24-7 because companies are trying to maximize production. So you may have shifts. You may have a night shift, day shift, dead night shift, whatever you call it. So there can be cases where your work-life balance is hit, especially in the industry. Not in the academia, but definitely in the industry. You can have back-to-back -back meetings. You could be presenting uh, PowerPoints all day. You could be uh, talking to people. You could be on the field doing job experiments or for that matter batch process and that means it can lead to higher burnout. So you have to be mindful, you have to be ready for it and that is why I always say the candidates that in the first 15 years of your career you should try industry. If you could survive it then only continue. If you could not then probably the industry is not for you. So it is important for you to try out the industry and the research part while you are still young. Once you have crossed 50 or 60, this kind of, uh, you know, burn, uh, heavy lifting may not be practical for you. But of course, by that time, you will be a senior person. So yes, that is something you have to keep in mind. High burnout rate can be there because biotech is a demanding field, target-driven field where it requires long hours, intense dedication, and of course, a lot of focus. Now, the third pointer for you today is job market saturation. And many freshers come to me saying that if nobody is giving me experience, then how would I gain experience? And if I don't have experience, then how would I get the job? So it's like a catch 22 situation. Now, there is a way to solve that problem. But yes, this is a real problem, which is job market saturation. 
And the problem is not because the industry is growing slow. The problem is because your academic colleges, they sprung out like mushroom and started selling biotech courses. And they pushed everybody into biotech. Now, there are so many biotech MSCs that the industry doesn't need them. They need specialized manpower, not generalized manpower, right? You have to know that a biotech industry takes crores of rupees and a lot of specialized processes are there. For example, I may not need 100 microbiologists today, but I may need a specialist in microbiology at higher levels who are doing research or doing uh, some unique work. So if you are facing, or rather I would say, you will face job market saturation. But to handle that, you have to remember that while you are still in your bachelor's or master's, be mindful that your college is just keeping you busy, but after that, this degree is of, of no use. Instead, you have to do some add-on courses. You have to do certification courses. You have to do internships. You have to do hands-on training. You have to do online or offline bioinformatics or coding or AIML. These kind of uh, cross-disciplinary, interdisciplinary research you'll have to do. Then only you will be welcomed into the industry. Otherwise, you will be exposed to job market saturation. And another aspect of job market saturation is applying for a job, Getting a job, clearing interview is a unique thing. It's, it's, it's art actually. So not everybody is uh, pro in that. So rather uh, when I train students for in our WhatsApp group, which we call it as WhatsApp Job Assistance Program, WJAP. So in this program, I especially train students on this particular factor that if you are not getting a job, it is not because you lack skills. It is probably because you are being very straightforward in the interview. You have to be very mindful of what you speak because the HR is smart enough to filter out and un understand your intentions or rather you are not able to communicate your intentions to him. Right? So that's also a reason why you are not getting a job. You can always talk to me about that or just put that in the comment section. I'll try to guide you. Now, the next or the fourth point will be ethical dilemmas. So when you're working in the biotech industry, it involves working with a lot of sensitive and controversial topics like gene, genetic en engineering or gene editing, CRISPR, stem cell research. And as a professional, it can be there can be a lot of ethical dilemmas. But you have to remember that you are a scientist and uh, uh, ethics is something which is always debatable and always perceivable. It depends on the perception. So instead of debating uh, science, you have to do science. Let the debates be done by experts. Okay. Next, I have seen um, as a fresher or as well as, well as an experienced person, you will see a lot of competition. So intense competition is the fifth point which I have for you. The competitive nature of the biotech industry and at the same time, there are so many new people trying to get in and there are so many old people who are trying to grow in their corporate career, you will face intense competition. Now, one of the best ways to handle this kind of competition is to stand out from the crowd. Do things which others have not done. Do things which others cannot do. Stand out and at the same time, remember that you keep adding value to your CV. I was told this fact early in my life by my mentor. She told me that if the world is rejecting you today, doesn't mean it will reject you forever. It only means that you have not added enough value into yourself. So if you add more value into yourself, the whole world will come and bow down to you and say, please, sir, madam, take this job. So that is something you have to know. Competition will be there in most of the industry, whether you go to IT industry, whether you go to uh, mechanical, civil, anywhere, you will find competition. But yeah, in biotech also, there is intense competition. And that's a Typical corporate thing. Next thing will be intellectual property challenges and confidentiality and publishing papers. Now, many companies will restrict you from publishing your research. Okay. So if you're someone who wants to publish your research, you can be mindful about that. The second thing is there can be a confidentiality clause. They will ask you to sign a lot of agreements. There can be a lot of legal agreements they'll ask you to sign because this is not a normal job. You're doing, you're going to work on confidential things. They'll ask you to sign a lot of legal things. So don't get scared out of it. Next will be, when you are working in that particular company, it is possible that you, you, know, you or your team achieves some grand or great result, maybe a new antibiotic molecule, but then it is not yours. It is the company's property. So you have to keep in mind. And 
you can be a co-inventor or maybe a co-author or something, but you are not the inventor or you are not the discoverer of that. The company will own the intellectual property. You have to keep in mind. So these kind of things will, uh, challenges will be there. The next pointer for you will be the seventh point, I guess, and that will be funding challenges. So many a times in your project when you are working, you suddenly your project will be ended because there is a budget issue. Or maybe the company didn't see any value and they will just suddenly do it. Sometimes it can happen because of bureaucracy. Sometimes it can happen because of favoritism. So you have to remember that this is not just for biotech industry. It happens in every industry. So funding challenges will always be there for your projects. And then the eighth point will be limited opportunities for advancement if you have not had an enough skill set into you. So if you just remain static, ki chalo, I have got a job now, I will just sit, relax and I will not uh, do anything. So the industry will keep evolving, they'll keep adding new technology and they'll keep seeing who is withdrawing more salary but is not giving me the enough return over investment and they will just fire you, remove you. So you have to be mindful of your future, keep adding new skill set. If you are a bioinformatician, learn AIML. If you are a biotechnologist, learn bioinformatics. If you are a biochemist, learn microbiology. There's no limit to it. Okay, learn physics, learn, learn chemistry, keep moving forward. Within the company, beyond the company, whatever, you have to keep moving forward. So that's one challenge which you'll face. Followed by that, now the ninth point for which I have for you is geographical challenges. So recently, I, ha I was talking to a student, I mean, rather I would say a biotech profession. So she's highly skilled, but she, she's married to someone. So he has a government job in Nagpur and uh, probably there are very, very less biotech companies in Nagpur. So she is now struggling, right? So what happened is now she cannot move out because she has a family back in Nagpur, but she's highly skilled, right? So what to do when this happens? Well, you have five to six opportunities, work from home opportunities which you can follow. Do not stop, do not allow a gap in your CV and uh, do not allow this limitation due to geography affect you and your career. So if you are single, you can always move out and you can go to those pockets of the country where you have biotech companies. For example, in US, you have Boston, yeah, Europe, you have France, Germany, UK, in India, you have um, various states like Karnataka, uh, Maharashtra, Himachal Pradesh or uh, Delhi, right? Hyderabad, that's uh, Telangana. So these are the places where you have to be. But if you are married, definitely you can go for online jobs, which is becoming a bioinformatician, becoming an AIML specialist, becoming a teacher, online teacher, becoming a marketer, like digital marketing for biotech companies, or becoming a scientific writer. So these are the five uh, or six things which you can do as an online thing. So, but yeah, never ever stop learning, never ever stop growing, that's important. Now the 10th point for you would be uncertain regulatory environment. And and this has happened in the past also. For example, researchers who were working on BT Brinjal in India never got an approval. So rather they had to move out of India and they went to some other country where BT Brinjal was uh, you know, uh, approved and they had to do their research because in India BT Brinjal was banned. So similar situations can be there. Suddenly they may come out with a rule that okay, CRISPR is banned or you need licensing for that. So these kind of regulatory challenges can be there. So as a researcher, you have to be mindful that suddenly government can come up with a rule which can completely rule out your job itself. And you know, governments are unpredictable. Suddenly they can come out and say, oh, okay, from tomorrow this app is banned. From tomorrow that technology is banned. For example, uh, drone is banned. Uh, stuff like that, right? So you know, uh, this, these were the 10 or 11 pointers which I wanted to share with you. Challenges will be there. So that's the first point. Like I said, you have to look at both sides of the road. Uh, today I showed you the slightly negative side, positive side I have always spoken about. But now you have to know this that even if there is a negative side, it doesn't mean that you should not pursue it. It all means that you have to be prepared to face those challenges. We are facing it, everybody does. But there can be people who will have a problem with everything which you have, right? They can have a problem with your degree, the, your dressing sense, the, the way you look, you talk or you, you, you walk. But hardly matters. You have to keep moving, right? You have to act like an elephant. There will be street dogs who will bark. So yeah, these challenges will always be there. Don't bother. Just keep moving forward. Keep learning. And if in case you have any specific questions you, or private question which you don't want to ask in the comment section below, you can always email me at shekhar at biotechnica.org. If it is something which is just in general or maybe you want to add some more pointers, put them down in the comment section and uh, I'll take them up personally. So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you soon in the next one. Till then keep shining. Bye-bye.